17-time BASS National Champion, nine-time BASS Angler of the Year. This is Fishing with Roland Martin. Brought to you by Chevy Trucks, the most dependable, longest-lasting trucks on the road. Strand Fishing Lines. Minn Kota gets you closer to fish. And Mitchell Reeves. Hey, Doug, where are you going to take Phil and I today? We're going to go down here somewhere. Huh? Yeah, Baffin Bay. Ooh, Home secret of the spot. big trout. Hey, he doesn't, I don't know if he, he ought to be telling the camera this. <laughs> they, they, all these guys are coming and wipe your spot out. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> Phil, we're ready, aren't we, son? We're ready. We're ready, son. Let's go get us <laughs> hog trout, hog trout. Big trout. You know, I've never caught one over uh, over eight pounds. Eight pounds is my biggest trout. Well, we're going to try for bigger than that today. I, sh I couldn't sleep last night thinking we are going to catch a state record. Oh, son. <laughs> <laughs> Phil tells me he's got a half a dozen over 11, and you got a, a couple over 12. And Oh, my gosh, I don't know what to do. That's some strong stuff, isn't yep. it? Yep. Boy, I tell you, a big trout with two of my favorite fishing buddies. We're here in Baffin Bay in South Texas with two of my good time fishing buddies, and we're lucky to have them here because these are both busy men. We're Watch talking about bit, Doug Bird, the premier guide of the Corpus Christi area. Huge yeah, trout, nice trout. big trout. And Doug's busy, 250, 300 days a year, guiding all the time. Oh, that's a nice one. That's a nice one, Doug. And Doug, I tell you, it's nice being here again after Ooh, two years. Yeah. That's just kind of a little one. Well, that's, he's nice, though. He's a nice three, four pounder. <laughs> and the other that treat is a man that's just as busy, a professional golfer, Phil Blackmore, and my old bass fishing buddy. B Phil is not only the long distance hitter of the, of, the, of the golf tournament trail, but Phil is a heck of a bass fisherman, and he lives right here in Corpus Christi, and you fish trout all the time. And look how tall he is. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was standing on the ice chest. <laughs> but this is really the Mutt and Jeff fishing team of Corpus Christi. <laughs> we got old Doug here with a good trout. And both of them, I fish with both guys, and I tell you what, this is a treat to get us all together, one, one boat. This is going to be fun. And that's just the first fish of the day, but hey, that's not bad. You know, in Florida waters, that would be a trophy. But well, that's that's you don't really catch not a big Florida, do you? you got no, all the nets and all the netting and stuff. All the kinda... netting and so on. We we hardly ever see a trout that big. Yeah. Well, this it's is just a, what, 25 for 24? 24 or 5, yeah. Okay, yeah. that's a good one. What's that, like five pounds? Yeah, about five pounds this time of year. Oh, that's good. Well, well I'm gonna I'm gonna stay with my fishing here. I'm gonna get my rod right here. Doug, I'm Doug. gonna take your spot. What, roll, what, you can take what, what were you doing? You were just twitching that just plug along. Just twitching it underneath okay. the water. Just uh, trying. What I'm trying to do is make enough noise and work it slow so they can find it in this dirty water. Okay. Because this is real dirty water. You can see about six inches. And you got to give that trout a chance to find you, find the noise, and come to it. Mm -hmm. So you got to work it real slow. And uh, if I can get it out of here without him. We're about 15 miles south of Corpus Christi. No, and part about 26. Of, I didn't want to tell him that. <laughs> I, knew, I knew where we were, but I didn't want to. I wanted to. I didn't want to tell him your best spot. Nah, everybody knows him. Isn't that pretty? Oh, that's a nice trip. Man, that's gorgeous. Okay, Phil, he's got us down now. He's got us. That's going to cost us ten dollars. We got a little bet going here, but today, folks, Doug's ahead right now. We might end up buying him dinner. But that's just the first fish of the day. And the one thing they did, we got blown out two years ago. Doug and I, we had bad weather, didn't we? 30 yep. mile an hour wind. Yep. This year, we said, he said, Roland, you got to come and try better weather. We'll get some big, big trout and, and a few nice redfish as well. So I can hardly wait. Ooh, son. son. I had one strike. Look at that thing. Ah, oh, come on, hit it. He didn't get it. Just twitching it along. Just twitching it along. He's going to come right around. Son, and that's a redfish. No, it's a trout. Oh, it's a trout. trout. It's a trout. Big trout. Three or four pounds. Hey, hey, hey son. Hey, son. <laughs> the game is tied. <laughs> Let me cut his line. <laughs> <laughs> We're counting trout. <laughs> but unfortunately, I'm right, losing baby. the game. Oh, Roland, what's that score count. anyway, Roland? <laughs> hey, that's good. Look at there. Isn't that pretty? Now, now, what's the uh, what's the legal limit here in Texas? Anything over 15 inches. Okay, so you can keep 10. You See, in Florida, we we have a 10 fish limit, worth considering a five fish limit, 
And, uh, but then we can only keep like one over 24. That's a good yeah, one. but you have a difference too. Oh, you we don't know, have the, the trout. Netters and the we don't have in the there trout getting your you mullet. Know. Texas is, you know, even got a law on the size of mullets you can keep nowadays. Well, there's no inshore netting, unlike Florida, yeah. where right. I've got a friend out there in Florida that tells me about all the netting goes on those little back creeks and stuff on the rivers sure. and everything. Yeah. Boy, I tell you what, it's, that's, that's got to really hurt the fishing. It really does. You know, one, one thing we talked about last time, Doug, we talked about the uh, GCCA. Yeah, right. And in Florida, we have the FCA, which is the Florida Conservation Association. And then, of course, the Texas GCCA started this whole thing and, and got the first moratorium on redfish back when the black and redfish were crazed. Right. And, of course, then you got the ban on the netting of the trout. So Texas has really been instrumental in showing the rest of the nation how to cope with, with the saltwater game fish populations. Boy, you've really done the job. Plus, they're <coughs> putting out 22 million fry out of the hatcheries right now, redfish. Oh, hey, listen, that's the uh, Bob Kemp hatchery isn't it? Yeah. Well, you know, I met Bob Kemp about 10 years ago before he died, and what a envisionary guy he was. He had all these plans for, for yep. uh, like, raising trout and redfish, and everybody said, well, that's impossible. You can't do that. And then he had all the plans of stocking Florida bass and all yep. the Texas lakes, yep. and they, they, everybody said, oh, that can't be done. But all that's come about, and it's really because of Kemp's administration that right. started. You, know, you so got it. Maybe we can go uh, look through, through the hatchery. Well, here we are, just a couple miles from Corpus Christi, the largest marine fish hatchery in the country, the most productive. And the director here is Todd England. And Todd, tell, tell us a little bit about the, the facility here. Well, this represents an alliance between three, three groups, pr primarily the Gulf Coast Conservation Association, which is That's a, a private here. conservation association. And the, they kind of uh, got this project started, didn't they? Yes, it, it spawned out of, out of a concern by, that, by special, special interest groups such as GCCA about the con declining populations for red drum along the Texas coast. And then who are the other partners? The Central Power and Light Company. Who, well, that, uh, that's a big power company right here. Yeah. And they, what, they donated the land. They provided the land oh, for okay. the facility. And then the Texas Parks and Wildlife Department, which annually staffs it and, and operates it. Well, you work for the Texas Park and Wildlife. That's correct. And uh, along as with some of the great biologists here. And here's the neat part, folks. They went past their goal and they produce so many redfish, you wouldn't believe it. How many redfish did you produce last year? This year we pushed, we put out about 33 million red drum. Ooh, and, and you had only predicted about half of that many, about right? About 15, yes. Sir. So they have, they have way in, ab way in abundance of, of over their, their goal, and what a, what a neat facility. And look, I see the big spawners here. Look at these brooders. Now, Todd, how big are these? Uh, they average about 20, 30 pounds. Oh, son, that's a big one. Well, Todd, how many acres of uh, ponds are here? We have about 44 acres. Boy, here's one of your big old rearing ponds. How many acres of uh, rearing ponds do you have here? We have 34 ponds totaling about 44 surface acres. Wow. In just another couple months, these will all be full of water and full of fish, raising some 33 million redfish and probably some, some uh, sea trout as well. That's correct. So we have an alliance between the Texas Parks and Wildlife the power company you see behind us and the Gulf Coast Conservation Association producing this great facility, producing all these fish for you and I to catch. And that reminds me, Doug and, and also Phil are waiting for me in a boat. They want to take me out fishing this afternoon. So I want to thank you for the short tour and uh, congratulations on your effort. Thank you very much. We thank, appreciate it. Thank Good you, luck. Todd. Okay, sure thing. Yeah, this is nice. <laughs> like the seats. Lots of room, that's good. Whoa, lots of room back there, too. Right smooth. Real smooth. Ah, they must have fixed this road. Chevy, the most dependable, longest lasting trucks on the road. Like Even when it's just barely a road at all. Fishermen, get a jump on the spring fishing season with this new Price Smasher Bass Pro Shop Spring Sale Catalog. It's our best ever, jam-packed with over 6,000 lures, hot new products, and your old favorites. If you need it, it's here. If you're a current Bass Pro Shops customer, your money-saving catalog is on the way. If not, call now, 1-800-BASS-PRO for a free copy. If you're gonna hunt fish, Jack said, what better place than a lake named Lure? 
to which we unveiled some lethal weapons. Mine, a Pope Peel's pocket fisherman. And from Bev, a bucket of night crawlers and some old Milwaukee. Can it get any better than this, Jack said? Of course, that was before a 10-pound bass sniffing the old mill found my net. But as I reassured Jack, it doesn't matter who caught dinner. As long as it's served with an old Milwaukee, it doesn't get any better than this. We have always felt in harmony with the land. Help the Soil Conservation Service help our Earth. Call us today. We owe it to our children. We got a big one on now, boys. Douglas, you need some help? This might, yes, be, sir. This, might be, <laughs> this might be an eight or nine pounder, boys. Man, that's a nice one. Ooh, son. Man, that's a trout. That's that is fish, a major, fish. major trout, boys. That's pretty fish. I'm talking about a big one. What did I tell you about that? Kind of left, land them on this left side if you can. Okay. Okay, shut her off now, because he may go under the boat on us. Oh man, what a trophy trout! Woo, boy, that's like the biggest one I've seen in years and years and years. Boy, you're talking about a big one. That's that's got to be seven or eight pounds. How big is it, Doug? Uh. He's about yeah, seven that's, or eight. That's, man, I guarantee it's eight pounds. Yeah. Let me try to get my hand around man, for it. Man, yeah, if you want to, Phil. Now, we don't have a net today. Hook. Watch that hook. We don't have a net today. I've got a net. I don't have, well, we'll get one. Good. Good. I think we got them. Phil's hand's big enough to. Hey, that look at that's that, an eight-pound trout there. <laughs> OK, let's get this scale up eight here. Eight pounds, rolling eight pounds, I'm telling eight you. Eight pounds. Real close to it. What is that? It 714. Is 714. What a trout. I'm talking Douglas. about a huge, huge trout. Man, that is really a nice oh, fish. I'll tell you fish, what, Douglas. these scales, this this humbles people because they all exaggerate yeah. and lie about these fish, but you you were within an ounce or two of the exact weight. And what a trophy. I'll tell you what, folks. We're gonna release him because yeah. that is, I just want to touch him just for a second. Just just for a second. I'm gonna I'll, I'll let him go, okay? Look at that trout. Isn't that a gorgeous? All oh, right. son. Douglas. Oh! That is a good one. <laughs> Way to go. Boy, I can tell you what. We're in a better day. We're doing better things this year, Doug, than yeah, we did yeah. last year. We've only been fishing a couple minutes and got a couple trophy fish. Wow. Son. Love it. Eight-pound trout. I mean, that's a hog. That is a big time. That's a major deal. Roland, it's a pretty funny story about how Doug and I met. We were down wade fishing. Uh, Ed Fiore, who also was on tour, my father and I, and uh, uh, Doug was out fishing with a customer, and this rain moved in, and boy, I'd, I told my dad and Ed, I said, you know, I can see through that. And, and so we stayed there on the bank, and after 55 minutes of getting totally soaked, we finally ran in the rain back to one of these cabins and hid underneath the porch. And Doug and his customer had been back there the whole time and nice and dry, and he started <laughs> laughing at us, you know. I, I tell you what, they're still teasing me about that. <laughs> Yeah. Well, I just, every time I went to one of my favorite holes, there was this big, tall, black-headed guy waiting in him. So I asked somebody at the tackle shop who he was, and they said, oh, that's Phil Blackmore. And I said, well, I want to meet him because that guy knows how to fish. I mean, this guy's a fisherman. He found holes that people have been fishing here 30 years don't know. Well, you know, I've, I've been fishing with Phil, what, for three years now, and we've won that one tournament at uh, the, the Bass and Golf right. tournament at the, Bass and Golf at the Disney World. This year. And then th this last year, we came in third, had the winning fish again this year up to the boat, and I didn't know whether we could la I could help you land it or not, and we yeah. lost a five-pounder that cost us the tournament. In fact, I talked to, to, uh, to Woody Blackburn, and Woody Blackburn, who, who hosts that whole tournament, said maybe we can use a, a couple feet of the film of us catching some of those fish in that tournament. So, folks, watch for a minute while uh, Phil and I catch some big bass at Disney World. Okay, just a little bit. Partner, yes, all right, all right, all right. Good pot, right. yeah. Got us okay. part. Way to go. Oh. Right on. Right. Right. Hey, way to go. Oh, all right. Oh, I love it. Son, we got it. Hope now. we catch more fish than we're doing the golf. <laughs> Let's pull that marker out. Marker out right here. Hey, way to go, 
close, huh? Yeah. That's a keeper. I believe. I think it is. Yeah, I don't know if it is this one. It's close. Yeah. It's over there. Here come the champions, Phil Blackmar and Rowan Martin. Congratulations. Thank you very much. Congratulations, Rowan. We're pleased to present you this check for $10,000, Rowan and Phil. Great job. Brought to you in part by Normark Corporation, the people who bring you Rapala and Blue Fox Tackle Manufacturers. You just have to wake them up. Huh? Hmm? The Super Vibrax. It creates bell vibrations that get fish up and at them. Year after year, Mercury outboards dominate offshore racing. They power more pro fishing tournament winners and win more Formula One racing titles than all other outboards combined. All of which makes the 94 Mercs winners even before they touch the water. When it comes to horses, breeding is everything. Give me the throttle, I'll show you some speed. Give me a swab and I'll saute some weeds. I was teased on stump. I was born to tow. I got a grip in that propeller and I'm itching to go. Stump breaking, weed shaking, men go to fishing machine. Yeah, ain't no place to hide my four wheel drive. Men Coda, four wheel drive for your boat. Come on. Hung up, huh? Yeah, come on, bait. That's a pretty strong line. And it's that new Kevlar fishing line from Strin. New Strin Kevlar. It's more than three times stronger than regular line of the same diameter. And you get great lure action and feel because Strin Kevlar just won't stretch. No matter what you hook. Another trophy? Strin Kevlar. It's one strong line. Oh, oh, oh nice yeah. Nice trout. Nice, nice trout. Come over here, I'll get them for you. Son. I'll get them with this, this net. This cold front has, the cold front really hasn't affected it much, has it? No. You know, it's funny. What... Let me get, let me swing them around and come back with the back to you. Like this. Another trophy fish. Wow. Look at the size of these things, folks. These are big old four, oh, five, here. or six, and eight pound trout. Wow. Oh. In all this cold weather and right after a front, hey, that's Love a good look. one, boys. Oh, heavens. Look how oh. fat that sucker yeah, just is. Hold it to the camera. How, now, how many fish. pounds is that one? This is about a seven pounder, I bet you. Is it? Six and a half, yeah. seven pounds. Woo, son. Pretty that fish, is a dog. nice fish. Now, now, let's do something right here. Let's measure the fish in length. Okay. Okay, let's get this jig out of here. Oh, man. Well, that's a nice trap. It's not going to hurt him too bad, is it? No, it's just in this roof. Okay. Let's, let's measure that fish just to give an you know, honest. And that's not the biggest Pretty one. fish, Douglas. No, nope. that's, yeah, that's heavy, piece. though. Oh, well, this is a fat, fat one. That's a fat one. This is a, some marks on this ice chest right here. 27 inches. It goes to 27 inches. It'll go seven so and a half. That, that may be a seven and a half pound trout. As heavy as he is, oh, fat around. As fat as that one is? Yeah. Put your claws on that roll. What Good I fish. consider a trophy, about as big as I've ever seen. I'm going to let him go, folks. OK? Yep, you got it. You know, these big fish, we're keeping a couple small ones. Oh, he's in good shape. We're keeping a couple small ones to eat. But when you deal with trophy trout like that, they need to be released. Well, this rig is really an interesting little rig. You know, popping corks for trout, for sea trout, has been an accepted way of catching sea trout for, for years and years. But this is a different twist, isn't it, Phil? This is not quite just a popping cork. No, it's a little different. It's got the beads on it, and the, the uh, cork itself slides up and down on the... It makes a clicking the, sound. makes a clicking sound. Sounds like a fish feeding or a shrimp jumping on top. And you start with, like, what, about a 20-pound liter in between here? He's a 20-pound liter and an eighth-ounce or quarter-ounce jig head. And, okay. Uh, some sort of tail like you got there. With that that sizzler. little sizzler tail is really nice. And uh, anywhere from uh, sometimes when you're fishing real shallow, you might use a six-inch drop all the way up to 
usually don't want to use more than two foot because if you get more than two foot, then it's not really associated with the sound of the court. Now, with your main line, what pound test line are you dealing with here? Uh, I use with, I use primarily 12 to 15 okay. pound test because we got have, a lot of I have 14 here. strand on mine, and I'm using a six and a half foot rod. This happened to be a Mitchell six and a half foot popping rod, and you're about a seven foot rod. I got a seven foot. I tell you, these things are kind of hard to throw with the leader. I prefer a little bit longer rod. So, so it, it, it's it's easier to throw up. A, a popping cork situation with a longer rod. I think so, oh, okay. yeah. But this is not a popping cork. It's called the Mansfield Mauler. That's a heck of a deal. I'm just going to make a sling cast out there. Just let it let it fly. Now, when you go to work it, Phil, you let it sit, float up straight up and down, and then you really pop it hard, right? And it kind of pop it a couple times. Try to pop it once or twice, and it, you know the noise attracts the fish. And uh, sometimes they prefer a little bit faster action, where you just kind of work it almost like a topwater bait. Sometimes you got to let it sit. Well, now, Doug, that, that last big one that you caught, that last seven or eight pounder, how did he hit? Well, he just sucked it under real slow. And, of course, right here where the water's so shallow, he can't suck it under far before he has to start swimming sideways with it. So uh, he just, I was popping it a couple times and then counting to a 10 and popping it a couple more because the so, water's so, a little so, chilly. So you let it float up and down for a while. And it's still off the bottom. You got one? Hey, Where'd what you, you got, go? son? Where'd you go? Hey, man, you got a good Just one. here talking. <laughs> hey, where'd you go? You were showing us how to do that. He caught a little bitty one. He Just was letting, letting it, it sit there. Just letting it float a little bit. Now, that's that's a good eating size fish. You're right. right. That, that's a candidate for the dreaded ride well, to the house. It's called fry fish pan. fry. <laughs> the dreaded ride to the fish fry. I parked my blazer in, on Homestead Air Force Base. Then Hurricane Andrew hit. It took a bunch of vehicles and smashed them into my vehicle, which was moved approximately 45 to 50 feet away. I was upset until the, the magical key touched the ignition and it started right up. Well, how about this one? I was ice fishing when my Chevy fell through the ice. We hauled it out, frozen solid. I changed the plugs, the fluids, started right up. That was 100,000 miles ago. Chevy, the most dependable, longest lasting trucks on the road. Frank's Mitchell 300 has worked flawlessly for 30 years. Mike's new Mitchell 730 has worked flawlessly since he bought it last week. We'll check back in another 30 years. Mitchell, the legend lives on. If you're gonna hunt fish, Jack said, what better place than a lake named Lure? To which we unveiled some lethal weapons. Mine, a Pope Peel's pocket fisherman. And from Bev, a bucket of night crawlers and some old Milwaukee. Can it get any better than this, Jack said? Of course, that was before a 10-pound bass sniffing the old mill found my net. But as I reassured Jack, it doesn't matter who caught dinner. As long as it's served with an old Milwaukee, it doesn't get any better than this. Factory rigged and loaded with standard equipment. If you thought Ranger quality was out of your price range, the affordable reality is about to hit home. Premiering the Ranger Sport R70 and R72. 17 feet of legendary Ranger performance and all unbelievably affordable. The new sport series from Ranger. Your ship really has come in. You're enjoying TNN, the heart of country and your number one source for country music, entertainment, and information. If you'd like to know more about our programs or guest lineups, call TNN Viewer Services, 615-883-7000. For tickets, call 615-889-6611. And remember, special arrangements for students and senior citizens are available. Well, boys. Nice trout. Oh, nice little three, four pound trout. On my little old rap rapala. Yes, sir, son. That's hey, a that's, nice fish. That's not a bad one. No. Nope. Well, I tell you what, this this trout fishing here, well, now we're not in Baffin Bay. We're actually out of Baffin Bay now. We're probably in more fish. What do you think? He might he might be a release candidate. It's a nice a fish. release candidate, son. That's a nice oh, fish, okay. son. Hey, all, all right. right. Let me get this thing out. And I'll release him real quick and uh, explain how I caught that one. Now, this just has the one the one uh, dog tooth in, the, in his mouth, I, I noticed. Yeah. 
Okay, let me get this out real quick. <laughs> well, he's not, he's not oh, yeah, bad. Yeah, that is a big one. That's yeah, a big one. Yeah, oh, man, you didn't oh, get that. Oh, he just God. cut off. I'm telling you what, Phil just had one on on the mauler. I had one on the Rapala little one. But he just, you, that was five, six pounder, yeah. at least, yeah. at least. Yeah, OK, I'm going to let this one go. Hey, we got to show this, a little bitty redfish. A little red. Is that from the hatchery, you think? It's hard to say. See, what, what it is, folks, what we have here is we have a little bitty redfish, but if you look down in that building down there, that's, that's the hatchery. What, maybe three miles down? Something like that. It's just right down the, right down the way. And there's a way to tell, and the, the biologist was telling me yesterday, he said that uh, the small ones are possibly the, the stocking ones because they, they stock them uh, a smaller size than the regular fish would be. In other words, this time of year, the regular wild fish would be bigger than this. So the way he explained it, he says, if you catch any little bitty ones right now, most huh. likely, they're the hatchery fish because of the size. Is that right? Yeah. They're, they're, they, weren't, they weren't spawned and hatched along with the wild ones. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so that's a product of that hatchery right down Pretty there. Pretty little fish, isn't it? Pretty little guy. Hey, look at that. I'm telling you what. Oh, you boy. need the net? Um, it's no, not bad. I don't know how he's hooked. Boy, I tell you what, let me, let's just get that. Hey, he's hooked good. That's pretty good. Okay, boy, that's a nice one. Look at that thing. He is hitting that thing. That thing is one nice, fair sized trout. Right. You know what? Now, I don't know how many more fish we're going to catch, but I'll tell you what, folks, we have caught quite, they have caught, I've only caught a couple. They have outdone me about three to one. But you've caught a half a dozen this size and with a couple big ones. And Doug, I think you're you're leading the, the deal with some seven and eight pound fish. Yeah, got it. Not a bad day. An excellent day. I had a couple opportunities. I probably had a couple big swirls. <laughs> <laughs> and you've caught a whole lot of nice, beautiful trout like this. This is one we're going to release because he's over to the 20 inch mark. But you know, if you have the opportunity to come down to South Texas, if you have the opportunity to fish the Corpus Christi area, you have to look up Doug Bird, because Doug has put us on the fish for the second year in a row, as well as Phil. Phil is just as good a fisherman as, as anyone, but you're a professional golfer. You I'm, don't I'm have, more expensive. You're more expensive. <laughs> you only have a few days. You only have two months a year to fish, so I don't think that you're going to be available for this, for to take people fishing. But this is going to be worth your while. Come down to South Texas and catch some of these great gator trout. We'll see you again next week. Woo! Love it. Fishing with Roland Martin. Brought to you by Chevy Trucks, the most dependable, longest lasting trucks on the road. Okay, here's the edge right here. Okay. Dodge, Hannah, and